Hello, this is Lisa Shea, and this is part three of Earning Money on the Web. Make sure you go back and watch parts one and two first so that you understand the basics before you come into part three, which is about earning money on the ideas we have brainstormed. You can, of course, do your work for charity if you want, if you have another way to earn income, but most people are looking to do this so that they can earn money to pay for their bills or their kids' college educations or whatever else you have in life that you are looking to fund. So let's start talking about the different ways that you can do this. First is, of course, that you can sell products that you make. We did a lot of brainstorming about that in the previous section. So these are origami earrings that I make. If you're selling products that you make, you can either try to keep an inventory of standard items. A friend of mine at eclecticlady.com makes soaps and she keeps an inventory of soaps. So if someone places an order, she can just send them out. On the other hand, with my origami, people order the flowers with certain colors and certain patterns, so I have to make them to order. I do have to keep an inventory of paper, or let the people know that it's going to be a little while if they order a special paper, because first I have to get the paper into me, and then make the product, and then send it out to them. So you have to make sure you're clear about that sort of thing on your site, if you're selling things that you have to make, and that maybe you won't even be around, you'll be on vacation or something. So make sure you lay that all out clear. The next type of product you've got are products that you have that you aren't necessarily making, but that you arrange for and that you can ship out. So this would be like our hair editor at Bella Online has designed a hair care line. So she doesn't sit there and actually uh, create these bottles, but she has them shipped in based on her specifications with her name, and then she sells them. So this is a good way to do something if you're not interested in making the items yourself you can still have them uh, made to your specifications. You can have products that you gather up and ship. So an example of this would be a woman that works near me that has an herbal shop on the web. She doesn't make the herbs of course and she doesn't have them formulated to her specifications but she gathers them up. So she goes to different suppliers, she gets the herbs and then she sells them all from her website. So if you're good at working with suppliers and coordinating things you could design a website that's really pretty and sell things that are all different things that you've managed to track down through whatever means that you've got. The fourth kind of sales that you could do is drop ship sales. This is when someone else keeps the product at their warehouse and then you just call them when you get an order and they send it out from their warehouse and they claim that it's coming from you. This can work great because you don't have to do any shipping and you just get the money coming in but usually you only get a tiny cut of the sales price and also you have to trust the person that they're actually going to send it for you or that they're going to send it properly. If they're wrong, you're the one who's going to get blamed. So it's a good idea to be very careful about doing this and I do that as a last resort. You can sell content. I am a very strong proponent of selling content. I do a lot of content sales on my sites. There's all sorts of different kinds of content that you can sell. So job listings, recipes, genealogy, pet care ebooks. So you can sell content through ebooks, you can make regular books, there's all sorts of different kinds of options that you've got here. You can do DVD sales, anything that you can provide information about, you can then sell content for. And if you're selling it just on the internet, like with ebooks, no shipping costs at all. It can go pretty automatic and um, with no shipping costs. So this is a great time saver and a money saver and the people get it right away so that makes them happy too. So if you can think of any ways to sell content then that's a really good area to get into. You want to think about whether you want to be general or specific in what you're selling. If you're very general then you have a ton of buyers but you also have a ton of competition. So say you were trying to sell all herbs to all people then that might be a huge audience. But if you're more specific while you might have fewer buyers all of them will want to come to so say you sold Celtic herbs, and with all the herbs you talked about the Celtic uses. You probably get all of the people interested in Celtic culture coming to your site. So it's a smaller group, but all of them would find you and would be ordering from you because of the value that you added to it. So some of the options for selling content are an ebook, which is an electronic PDF file that someone can just download and read. A real physical book, which of course takes more effort because you have to have someone print it, and printing costs can be really high. You could put the content for free to the end user, but then sell advertising, and I talk a lot about advertising later in this talk, or there's only area, so that the content is on the site, but only members who pay for access to that area can get into it. So we'll talk about each of these different sections coming up. I actually have a full talk on just ebooks, because ebooks are a really great way of selling content. Users love them, they're easy to put together, and you don't have all the high printing costs that are associated with the physical book. 
So uh, the picture there is a physical book that I do have published, but I have that with a regular publisher. You can charge website membership. I mention this because it's possible, but a number of my friends have tried this and it has pretty much always failed. People can find so many websites that are free on the web that they're unlikely to want to pay money to go to a website. It's much easier to get advertising on your site and to get the advertising to pay your hosting bills than it is to convince people to keep coming back and paying money to you month after month or week after week to have access to the content that's on your site. It also makes them feel um, like they're owed more, so it's much less advertising where the users get the content for free. So let's talk about advertising. This is a whole section and you know, you've probably seen all the Google ads and Yahoo ads and everything else and people think that advertising is this great miracle that they can get trillions of dollars flowing in without any work. This isn't true at all and if you handle advertising poorly you can actually drive away customers and lose money compared to the money you could have made if you handled advertising properly. So let's talk about some of the different issues involved with advertising on the web. First there are different types of ads. CPM is cost per thousand, M is thousand in uh, Latin, and this is that every thousand views of the ad someone pays you a dollar or fifty cents. Cost per click is every time a visitor clicks on the ad they pay, the uh, client pays you, and CPA is every time a person makes a purchase you get a cost. And then there's banner exchanges which I definitely don't recommend. I would say go with CPM as much as you can because you are showing the ad and that's what your responsibility is. When you're advertising, it's very easy. You just put the ads up and then people send you money and you can in fact make money. Again, you have to do this properly. If you're showing ads for people, you should get paid for showing the ads. It's not your responsibility for the person to click on the ad because you didn't design the ad. And it's not your responsibility for the person to buy anything because it didn't have anything to do with their website. So you should get paid every time the person sees the ad because that's your responsibility is to get people to see the ad and to have a quality website to have the ad shown on. The downsides of advertising is that you spend all this time and effort to get people on your site and now you're trying to get them to go away from your site. So it's, you're driving people away from your topic which hopefully is selling things. You're destroying your reputation depending on what kind of ads are on there if you're not careful especially with like Google ads. Random ads can be really dangerous. You could have a site that's cats and ads could show up on your site that are anti-cats. That's a sort of silly example but there's some much more serious examples that you can imagine that I've seen. So you want to make sure you hand choose the ads that you're running. So when you run advertising you want to hand pick the products that you are advertising. You want to talk to the actual manufacturers and run promotions for them that you believe in. If you review them yourself and then link to them, then you'll get a ton of sales for that advertiser. If you just have some random Visa ad show up, then hardly anyone will click on it because people tune out ads really quickly. You want to also use affiliates or ad agencies that you believe in. I've had a number of ad agencies that I've done work with and then when it comes time for them to pay me, suddenly they're vanished into the mist. So you want to make sure that any that you believe in and that you have a contract in place and that everything is signed up front before you start running ads and sending a lot of traffic their way. So the sites that I run, which is uh, BellaOnline.com, LisaShea.com, RomanceClass.com, WineIntro.com, and a number of others, I never run Google ads because Google ads will often run in links that are exactly opposite of what I'm trying to promote on a given site. I could have a particular article that's about uh, religion and it could be anti-religious ads running on there. I always handpick the ads that I run and on my sales sites like my origami site I don't have any ads at all because I want people to focus on what I'm selling. I don't want them seeing links to someone else's origami and going off to buy their origami instead of mine. I run a ton of ads for my ton of ads for charity because I really think that part of what we should do in the world is to help out others that are less fortunate than us and really people feel good about seeing a site that has charity ads on it and it brings a, a general happy feeling to the world, which I think we can definitely use. So uh, be sure to follow the rest of the sequence to learn more about ebooks and other topics. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much.